she spun the tires. <laughs> she is awake. And we got all the beads back. Hi, welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. My name is Troy and this is part two of my Mercedes C126 Revival Series uh, where I bought my dream car sight unseen from a auction house in California and I'm now dealing with the consequences of my actions. So if you just saw in the first stop motion, I've just changed the oil potentially for the first time since 2007. Uh, but we'll get into the, the records and the history a little bit later, but we're just about finished with the oil change. Um, of course, the, uh, the, the drain pan bolt was bent and misshapen, so that was a fun struggle. I've already poured oil on myself, and I'm filling it up with what looks like dirty bath water, but we'll chat about that here in a second, so stay tuned. So, most people, would you put oil into your car that looked like this? I don't think so, but that is actually what's recommended. This uh, anti-friction 1040 by uh, Mercedes Source, Ken, FCP Euro, everyone that does things with these older Mercedes high mileage with the timing change you want, this is supposed to be the oil that's supposed to go in it. So we're gonna do that. The oil that came out looked pretty similar, but that's just because it was old. Ooh, I just backed it in the garage and almost screwed up Severely, oh man, that was close. Almost messed that up. All right, so we got the oil change part of this all wrapped up. I'll let that sit, check the level a few times, see that nice gray oil on there. Um, after that, we're gonna do the rest of the tune-up. So we got spark plug kits. Uh, let me just show you what we have. All right, this is what remains. So we've got uh, spark plugs, we got warm up regulators, we got new rubber pieces and bits and bobs, we've got a fuel filter, we've got a rotor, we have an arm. I forgot to get belts, I don't know why I forgot that. And we've got the rear uh, hydraulic accumulators for the SLS and the rear suspension. So, bit of a tune up, bit of a fab, or a revamp, because again, I don't think this car's had any maintenance for a very long time. And why do I think there's been no, well, no main maintenance. Now, I, I showed you the oil change sticker from 2007 at 178,000 miles, and this car has 178,000 miles, which is kind of scary. Um, but I do have, let's see, just put in the wrong spot. So, the crazy thing about this car, uh, there's the original owner, California car, maintenance. Um, all right, so the first stamp in here. 42,000 miles in 1990. So like he bought it and then drove it 42,000 miles. Don Pendleton House Imports. Second stamp. Still 1990, 45,000 miles. So this thing with its upgraded CD sound system, its tinted windows, its car phone, this thing was a real, I'd love to meet the original owner of this. 54,000 miles in 91. It's almost completed like I don't know, a fourth of its total mileage within the first couple of years. 70,000 miles in 1991. I mean, 92, I've got some stamps. 
37,000 miles, but I mean, this is the service, but he's obviously going over. 74,000 miles in 1994 at Mercedes-Benz Hollywood, Sunset Boulevard. Uh, and there's not much after that. You're at 120,000 miles in 99. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think there was some other ones, but you get the idea. This car, you know, it was driven a lot when it was first purchased and then not so much after that. I'll find some more service records, but that's why we're doing this stuff now. Okay, so we're back. We're under the car and everyone's asleep in the house. So I've got an hour to uh, continue on my Mercedes restoration project. So let's go under here to show you what I'm up to next. And thank God this thing is not rusty because it makes life so much easier. Uh, what I'm focusing on is that black round thing there. Yep, that is the accumulator, which I believe is causing my bouncy rear suspension issues. And if you're familiar with these cars, well, I think you've probably gone through something like this and it needs to be replaced. So here's my Philly Bilstein. Not sponsored because I'm poor. Uh, rear accumulator, it's about a hundred some bucks. Uh, pretty reasonable um, uh, piece. You know, like I said, anything that's hydraulic sounds scary, but this is not scary. Uh, so I need an 11, a 17, and a couple things. We're just gonna undo it. It's gonna drain and just reinstall it. It's just two lines and some 13 millimeter bolts. So the internet says it's easy. Let's, let's try to confirm that. All right, so I've got the, uh, man, it's tough to get a camera angle in here and not block my hands. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this, uh, I need it to focus, which you probably can't. Uh, this 17 millimeter soft line has been disconnected to depressurize it. Then I want to do this 11 millimeter hard line and then the 13s that hold up the old accumulator and this should be off. So again, hopefully this is not that big of a job. All right, so there's some, there's some fluid we're gonna let drain out. Um, I think the whole system takes two liters or something, so I'm gonna make sure I do both of the rear ones at the same time, uh, so we don't have to full, uh, fill them that many times. Uh, so yeah, I just gotta remove it and pull it out. All right, so this is all buttoned back up. Everything went back in. There's a fitting that it goes in to the accumulator that you need to remove from the old accumulator so the two go into each other. It's something I didn't, uh, didn't really understand at the moment. So it's easier to take that fitting off while it's secured to the car. I had to put it on a vise and take it off. There's another 17. Uh, so yeah, everything gets in. Only two lines disconnected, in and out. So let's go to the other side and test it. Yeah. All right, so the job is done and the car is sitting visibly lower. Uh, it took probably about 20 minutes aside, so not unreasonable. Uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, turn it on and we're gonna top up the hydraulic fluid. I didn't really lose that much. Uh, the whole system didn't drain out. We're gonna turn it on, rev it up, pressure things back up, and hopefully have a, a functioning system. Um, we'll see. We'll just... Uh, We'll just leave it running, honestly. This thing wants to cooperate. Come on, hang around, do the thing, be a car, be a thing. Where are we at now? We are, we're at the minimum, so we'll add a little bit and then turn it on so it's not shocking the system too much. Of course, there's no, ow. And to make me. Perfectly. 
Well, that's a no immediate change. Alright, so nothing is coming up dramatically. I guess I'm kind of used to air suspension, so uh, we're gonna let it idle for a while and take it for a spin around the block and uh, see if we can't get things functioning and then topped off. Alright, it's coming up a little bit, which is good, so we'll just keep driving and then check the fluid and top it off when we get back. Have me worried there for a second. I mean, the next thing is the ride quality has is starting to improve. It's slow, this thing's figuring itself out, but it's getting there. Cool, so the level has definitely come down. There's more fluid uh, circulating through the pump and into the accumulators, probably building up pressure and whatnot. I'm not an expert, but it's getting there. This is good. Uh, so that's two jobs down, right? That is the uh, oil change. First time in way too long. I've got the accumulator. So now the car is fine to drive. Like I said, I did the brake fluid, the brake lines, and the tires. So this is everything you need to make an old car that's been sitting safe for the most part. The next thing is the tune-up stuff. Again, fuel filter spark plugs, cap rotor, but right now it's functional. I don't really feel bad driving around in the current state. So that's kind of something to think about when you're messing with these. Well, the moral of the story is this car has still been pretty honest and good to me. It's not rusty, so things are coming apart. Uh, everything that was kind of disclosed as far as the major issues is being as what they were. Like I said, he said the, the SLS accumulators weren't functional. I replaced those, now they're functional. Um, that the amp wasn't working for the speaker system. We just plugged that back in. It's working, um, and the blower, I mean, little, just little things. Everything that I have encountered has been a replace, diag, fix. There hasn't been anything that's exploded in my face, so I've just jinxed myself, and this whole thing's ruined. I don't know why I keep trying to do this. All right, so the next thing on the tune-up list is a new cap and rotor. Um, don't really replace these often. But I'm sure the one that's in there is pretty nasty. And I'm, I'm kind of chasing down that intermediate. So I think it's a fuel-related miss. But, you know, I've ordered the part. So let's uh, let's continue on and do the thing. So we're going to pull the old one off. Probably mess up all firing orders. Um, and go from there. Maybe I'll label them. Maybe I'll do it smart. Let's do that. Let's label the wires. And actually, some of these wires actually have the factory markers on them. So I feel a little more confident popping them off if they don't break. Just don't break. You gotta get wires. I didn't really, you know, didn't really think this one through. Okay. Number four, number five, numero uno. All right, so that just leaves, well, so I have to remember this position and all that fun stuff as well. That's what old cars ask you to do. All right. So, not too bad in there, but you know, it's probably original. It's not, no harm in, in swapping that out. So that's kind of where I'm at. So yeah, I just pulled up on it and it came off. So that's that's good. All right, so that's a pretty much a like for like swap. And uh, we're going to pop the new rotor back into position. Doing this in real time. It's so easy, I can do it. God. I don't I don't hate working on Mercedes stuff, you know? Like it really could be worse. I 
would have been good to start these before I put it on. Because they're not even threaded down enough to catch the bits at the end. All right, so that's all on snap back together. So the main reason I replaced it is this, let's see if it'll focus, this rotor arm. Come on. No bueno, not great. Not terrible, but uh, not much there. So let's see if this makes a difference, let's fire it up. much that's much smoother it was like missing when I drove it in um, oh that that's a I think that did something Now, the next uh, lunch break, I call it maintenance procedure that I'm going to do, at least for this uh, C126, is uh, the spark plugs. Here's what we got. Got these NKG. Got the kit from Mercedes Source. Came with a few bits and bobs. All right, in there somewhere. And already gapped into 0.33 or 0.35, something like that. Well, I think it's better than what's in there, so we're going to go ahead and uh, slap them in. It's probably going to take longer than I think. Of course, the sun came out, so it was nice and cool a second ago. Thank you. Man, rough around here. All right, so let's start it up. I'll do the other side a little bit later, make sure nothing blows out. Just spark plugs, they say. So spark plugs are all in. I've been a, bit, a little bit hasty about my filming here, but I did some a little bit of a revamp that I didn't film completely. So I removed these rubber bits. So I've got new rubber bits for the air to control valve. So that's hopefully gonna give me a better seal. Also, it's got a little bit of high idle. So I pulled that idler screw out so the, the brass fitting is flush with the top of the grommet here. And I put this back together, fire it up, and uh, yeah, hopefully we notice a difference. All right. My fuel miss, but I'm not taking this as a total loss yet because my idle is better. What was that like 1100? And my response, my, my pedal response is much better, also. Um, still gonna have to figure out what this, the, what this miss is. Um, fuel filter and stuff, that's next on the list. No, I told, I told him to bring it. <laughs> so 
So while this Mercedes saga, and I know I'm not filming it very well, is unfolding, I'm hitting I'm hitting the Mercedes with the parts cannon because that's what that's what someone who's diagging at a shop might also do. So I'm gonna take care of that for them. So when I do eventually give up and bring it to a shop, I can say, hey, all this is done. You guys focus on anything else that remains, like an EHA valve or or something. But in the meantime, my diesel truck, the 73, has been at the shop, and that has been a bit of a debacle as well. And you, and if you're used to dealing with communications with third parties and shops and things like that, you you might feel my. Well, I bring this to a diesel shop of Mechanicsville. They've got some legacy 73 mechanics that really know these things and can, you know, pretty much get things done quickly and efficiently. So I brought it there. I had a diesel leak on a line behind the turbo or under the turbo that was fixed. So now my hard start, uh, if you got better fuel pressure, the hard start issue has been remediated. So it runs great. The other thing I did was have them install an upgraded sump and 38 gallon rear fuel tank to replace the 16 gallon tank that was back there. So I get double the capacity um, better up, you know, uh, fuel, uh, uptake. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And a lot of other just little quirks. It was rusted out and just not that great. It was leaking, causing all types of issues, but I didn't really bring it there for that. I brought it to get a sender replace for this tank and this tank, they just didn't put back in. So I'm down to one tank, even though that is a big tank. I don't need two tanks. It's still, I have to go back. And I really, I brought it there for them to change the oil and they forgot to change the oil. And this place is like 30 minutes from my house. And my wife has to drop me off there. And I told her it would be the last time. And it's not the last time. So we have to go back. And I have to buy a new tank. Cars are fun. Cars are fun. It's just... Oh, oh, here's the biggest one. I almost forgot. Holy crap. Bought a new headliner and installed it three weeks later. What is going on? So I'm going to have to pull it again, which I didn't want to ever do again. And uh, I guess re-glue it. This came glued. So I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I didn't want to have to do this. This is the whole point of buying one that was an intact ABS plastic unit, so I didn't have to do it again. So now I have to do it again. I have a real job too, so apparently. So I got a notification that my FCP Euro order is on the way and it will complete the uh, the Blitzkrieg, the parts cannon Blitzkrieg of the M117, uh, which I am almost done with. So, so far we've done cap, rotor, plugs, um, rubbers, cleaned out the, uh, the idle control valve. Um, it's functioning. It's functioning to the best of my knowledge. It, it idles at 600. Uh, if I unplug it, it idles at 1500. So there's that. Um, I still have the lumpy idle misfire. Um, I don't see any fuel leaking from the EHA valve over here, it still could be bad. I haven't touched any of the injectors or anything. I feel like I have spark on all the cylinders. I feel like it's a fuel issue. I've replaced the fuel filter. Um, and that's that's the that's the parts cannon, you know? That's the stuff, I mean, again, you could say, why did you do all that? But um, it needed to be done, honestly. Um, regardless, I mean, all that stuff was old and, and kind of nasty, you know? Did it function better before I did all that? It did, actually. It runs a little worse now, so, you know, that's what, uh, that's why we, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. This is it, the last parts cannon application. Plug wires. Oh, it's not, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna fix it, I'll be honest.
All right, so all the wires are in. Everything's reattached provisionally, let's call it. Um, I did find, I don't know what this is. It's like a little wart in the coil wire. It goes from the top of the distributor to the controller. So I don't know, could that be it? I, who knows? Let's fire it up and let it run. What it sounds like. So that sounds pretty good, but it will usually sound pretty good until it starts getting a little heat in it, and then it'll start misfiring if those same systems are, uh, those same issues are persisting. But that, that sounds better. Let's, let's give it a second. I'll check back in and let it idle for a while. So it's still nice and smooth. And I don't have the air cleaner on or anything, so let it. Let's not. Let's not get cocky. Let's. 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 I want to be disappointed, right? So could this be one of those rare scenarios where the parts cannon actually worked, and I didn't have to pay someone to do do diag? Usually, you throw the parts. You shoot the parts cannon. You do full artillery strike parts cannon, and nothing. It persists. That's something silly, but. It's still idling nicely, as it did when I first bought it. So, I don't know. Let's put it all back together and take it for a ride. All right, let's uh, take this for a little spin. Another start. That wasn't a good start. I want a better start. That was a better start. So that's still smooth, that's what we want. Now, a little bit of retrospective conversation on this whole endeavor, right? This car was supposed to be a project, but I wasn't expecting it to be as much of a mechanical headache. I thought it was gonna be more of a running and driving project and not a not driving project. Because not driving projects are not projects that usually are successfully finished. So, yeah, still no miss. Wow, okay. And I'm, I'm almost up to temperature too. I think I have a little bit of a fuel smell when I hit the gas still. That, that could still be something. I see no visible leaking fuel or anything like that, but that's okay. But it is running, there's no surging, there's no bumping, sputtering or anything like that. So that's positive. Um, man. I think I've got myself back to a, a working a working car, which is good because I don't have, I'm still waiting on the water pump for the classic, uh, the Freelander. That's all gonna be another video of what's going on with the Freelander. And I sold the gold E36 BMW, which was my best car. Um, so that really left an open spot in the fleet of, uh, of fun kind of turds that was usable. And that's what this was supposed to fill, and I really haven't been driving it for the last few weeks due to the, the misfire that got worse. So I am uh, I'm pretty happy. Let's uh, let's go up here and do a little pull and see. Make sure she's not breaking up at all. Woo! She spun the tires. <laughs> she's awake, and we got all the beads back. There is the speed. Okay. We, uh, we've unlocked a little bit more power than we had before. That's, you know, the 560 in the US spec has always still been a little bit of a dog. And I've owned a 420 before and I've driven other 560s. So, you know, they're, they're not fast off the line. They're fun to drive, but not, nothing special. Uh, but it should, it should, it should light them up a little bit. It should give you a little, a little chirp. And uh, that one, that gave me a little chirp, um, which makes me feel much more confident. And uh, in the fact that it is running right again, I've got new oil in it. I've got new air filter. I've got all new plugs, wires, everything full tune up. I don't think I've done a real full tune up in a non Rover in a while. So I am, uh, I, you know, I inadvertently gave this thing a little mini restoration, which, you know, all cars need, obviously. Also the AC working still, 
Uh, the blend door is still kind of kicking on and off, not always blowing directly at me, but it's all still working. I haven't done anything else to the car cosmetically. It does need a little bit of cosmetic touch up. That's what I was really hoping that this process would be. So we're gonna get back to that. Gonna try to refinish the wheels, get the purple off the back, even though I'm starting to kind of like it. Uh, it is period with the car. And uh, yeah, I kind of continue getting this thing back up to snuff. My friend has a 1989 one owner uh, 560 SEC AMG. No AMG internal components, but an AMG body kit and a lot of other bits. Let's do that. So that's second gear, so it held second gear. Again, these cars start in second gear, so it really wasn't going to downshift past that if I put it over to B on the shift knob, I can get that first gear, which I'll still end up doing. Um, but no, this, uh, I think I got her sorted. I think uh, you guys probably enjoyed seeing me struggle more than I enjoyed struggling. Um, and it's never one fix. I spent hours, days even, on forums, Peach Parts, Ben's World, everything, going back to the 90s, doing a lot of research. I, you know, If you're on there, if you're on YouTube, I watched your videos. And there is no exact fix for these type of things. You kind of have to figure it out yourself. And I'm glad I didn't pay anyone to do it because uh, that would have been probably thousands of dollars in parts and labors in the hole. So that's where when you own something like this, you got to be able to do some of your own work because it's not really hard. It just takes time if you want to save money. Um, and that's the, way, that's the way you've lived to fight another day. You got to save a little money once in a while. And I'm still idling at 600, 650. And this thing's wonderful. Ooh, a little TR6. Hey, buddy. Hey, friend. I like that color. All right, a little fir first gear pull. I got a little kind of like drive shaft, little thumpy thump. Uh, could be transmission mounts or something under full throttle. That'll be another thing. I want to check the diff fluid. I want to bleed the SLS system. I don't really think I did that correctly last time, but I think that's going to probably wrap up this video. So the goal is to quickly get this car running and driving. I've done the tires, oh, I forgot, I've done the brake fluid. I've done everything to make this car safe and I guess usable if someone besides me needed to drive it. And that's, that's kind of big for me. I want cars that I own uh, to be able to be used by other people and not just me. I don't have to explain every little quirk, uh, which I end up doing anyway. But I think I've got this car most of the way there which is good. I've, you know, I'm returning it to a functional automobile, which is what the goal of a lot of this is, for me at least. So that's gonna wrap up this video. What was, what was the fix? I'm gonna to have to assume it was a combination of many different things. Of course, the car kind of needed everything. What probably fixed the intermittent, but then constant miss was probably the wires. It was probably a bad wire. I looked at them visually, they were all okay, except for that coil wire with the little wart in it. So if you want some uh, closure, I would say it was the wires. Again, easy thing to change could be, would have been the first thing I did, I just didn't, think that they looked bad or they looked had any issues. But I should know from my Land Rover experience that just go ahead and do it. So that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope you like the series of the Mercedes. It's definitely not over. <laughs> Again, there's gonna be more. Uh, I, I have to dial everything in now. I've got it running and driving. All I've gotten up to is par, so now I gotta dial it in. And we'll catch you on the next one because this car is gonna be around for a while. Thank you.